Wella, wella raga. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the first episode in my series of Wella Francais. Now, if you guys have been following my channel and other social media platforms for a while, you'll know that I have been studying French for almost the past four years, and I've been asked for a really long time to share some of my notes and to create some French content. So just to preface everything we will be going over today, I am not an expert in French, I'm just a fellow student of this beautiful language. And what I am hoping to do with this series is just to share my knowledge and my notes with all of you guys so that you guys can see how someone else studies French. And who knows, maybe my notes will be able to help you guys in your French studies. So without further ado, we're going to take a look at my digital whiteboard right now, and we're going to go over the present tense. All right. So if any of you guys have ever participated in one of my Willa University lessons before, this will be very familiar to you. This is not 100% um, like our other Willa University lessons because we're not going to be doing in-class exercises. There is no homework exercise with an answer key, but we are going to be going into a fair amount of detail, not a terribly huge amount. So we're going to cover the present tense, but there are still some small things that we will try to cover at some other point in time. But anyway, what is the present tense? Now, the present tense is what we think it is, right? It's when you're talking about a general fact or truth. For example, the sky is blue. It's for actions taking place at this very moment. I am talking with you all. And it's also for things that take place in the near future. This is different than English, but this is very similar to some other Romance languages like Italian. We can say tomorrow I go to the store and it makes sense in French and also in a language like Italian. And we will cover some of these areas with our examples here today. Now, as we begin any time with a new language, we need to cover the subject pronouns. How do we say I, you, he, she, it, and so on? Now, a very common way to go over these pronouns in most Romance languages or languages that derive from Latin is to set up a table. I really like this setup. What we do in one column is we have these singular pronouns. So I, you, he, and she. In French, they also have a special pronoun, on, which is used for one and also we, just depending on the context. Then we have the plural pronouns for we, the plural form of you, so meaning you all or you guys. And then il and elle, which are the two theys in French, because they have two ways of saying they, one for feminine, one for masculine but we're gonna go through all those right now. Now, one point that I do want to make before we pronounce all of the French subject pronouns, like English, you always use the French subject pronoun before a conjugation of the verb. For example, we say, I am Tom. In French, we say the same thing, je suis Tom. We say je, then suis, I am. So it's very important. This is a departure from other Romance languages like Italian or Spanish, where the subject pronoun is optional. So. I is je, you is tu. This is the informal or familiar you when you just know one person or someone's younger than you, they're your own age, you're not trying to be formal with them. He is il, she is elle. One or we is on. We is nous. So basically more formally you say nous, but in spoken French, à l'oral, as we can say, oral French, but spoken French is what we say in English, you can say on. You all are simply the formal use when you're being polite with someone, you don't know them, you can call them vous. Or if you're addressing a group of people, like if I were talking to all of you guys, I would use vous. Then we have il, which is they. It's they if we're just talking about a group of masculine things or a group of guys. And also if we're talking about a group of guys and girls collectively. We then have L, which is the feminine they, and it is only for a group of females or a group of feminine things. Now, you may have noticed the pronunciation of il and il is exactly the same. The conjugation of the verbs is different, and context will help us to know whether we're talking about he or they. Now, the conjugating rules are pretty straightforward. They are very similar to other Romance languages. We have three main verb groups. E-R, I-R, and R-E. These are the verb endings. So depending on what a verb ends in, if it ends in R-E, I-R, or E-R, that's going to dictate how it gets conjugated in every verb tense in the language. Now, what we have below here are three tables. These are not necessary to study, 
but I like to include these in case you are a student that likes the verb ending uh, style of studying where we say, okay, for all regular ER verbs, use these verb endings. If you're talking about je, if you're talking about tu, if you're talking about il, elle, or on. That's basically what these are. So we're gonna go through them really quickly. We have for ER verbs, je will end in e, tu will end in es, il, elle, on, e, nous, ons, vous, E Z or E Z for all of my non-American followers. Il and L E N T. I R verbs. Je I S tu I S il elle on I T nous y sont. I just like pronouncing that as a word. Vous y c'est same thing there. And then also il elle is. So for those ones, for whatever reason, I like to pronounce them as if they're words. R E verbs. We have je ends in s. Same thing for tu. Now, il, elle, on, there is no verb ending. Just remove the RE, you're good to go. Nu will end in ONS, vu will end in EZ, and il, elle, third person plural, will end in ENT. So let's actually see how these work. This note right here just corresponds with what I mentioned to you guys about the third person singular conjugation. So let's take a verb from the first group, from the ER verb group, and conjugate it in the present tense. Parler. Now, parler means to talk or to speak. If you're familiar with Italian, this looks a whole lot like the verb parlare. But yet again, this is parler, different pronunciation of R. Uh, it's pretty different, right? But it does look pretty similar. Anyway, je parle means I talk. Je parle. You talk is tu parles. Tu parles. Il, elle, on parle. He, she, or one talks or speaks. Il, elle, on parle. Nous parlons, we speak. Nous parlons. Vous parlez, you all speak or you formally speak. Vous parlez. Il, elle parle, they speak. Il, elle parle. For example, I could say, Je parle au téléphone avec ma mère. Je parle au téléphone avec ma mère. That means I talk on the phone with my mother. It could also mean I'm talking to my mom. Um, on the phone, for example, if you wanted to swap the words around. But we could also just simply say, I talk with, I talk to my mom on the phone. I talk on the phone with my mom. So now I'd like to take a moment to address how we form a question in French. There are three ways of doing so. For example, if we wanted to say in English, are you talking with your mother? We could say one of three things. Parles-tu avec ta mère? Est-ce que tu parles à ta mère? Tu parles à ta mère? So let's explain these. Are you talking to your mother? If you're going to be formal, which you wouldn't do when you're using tu, but just to show you an example, you invert the order of your verb and your pronoun. So instead of the subject pronoun going before the verb, as it usually does, it will go after and you put a hyphen. Parles-tu à ta mère? Same thing we do in English. We invert the order of our words. Instead of saying you are, we say are you. So here, we've got a really nice correlation. Now, you could also say informally, est-ce que, est-ce que. Now, what does that mean? It means, is it that? So is it that you speak to your mother? However, they view it just as simply meaning, are you talking to your mother? Or do you speak to your mother? Now, very informally, you just say, tu parles à ta mère with a rising intonation. Tu parles à ta mère. So this is probably how you would say it. If you are just talking to someone that you know, you're calling them tu, so you know them well, tu parles à ta mère. Now let's take a look at another verb from a different group, finir. Finir means to finish. Here's how we conjugate it in the present tense. Je finis, tu finis, ils, elles, ont fini, nous finissons, vous finissez, ils, elles, finissent. For example, we could say in context, elle finit, ce devoir avant de retourner à l'école. Elle finit ses devoirs avant de retourner à l'école. She finishes her homework before going back to school. Now, I do want to point out, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am a student of French, I'm not an expert, I'm not a French teacher. I'm just sharing my notes with you guys. The way that I teach is the same way I learn. So I take notes as if I'm teaching a subject. So these are my very same notes that I use to study French grammar. So my pronunciation is not going to be perfect. Maybe it can give you somewhat of an idea, but definitely feel free to check with a native French speaker to make sure you've got everything right. 
Now we have vendre. Vendre means to sell. Here's how we conjugate it in the present tense. Je vends. Tu vends. Il, elle, on vend. Nous vendons. Vous vendez. Il, elle, vend. Now, I want to point something out here. As you may have noticed, the way that we pronounce this is, for example, if I say he sells, il vend. But if I'm saying a group of guys or a group of guys and girls together sell something, I'll say il vend. That's how we're able to tell the difference. So a silent letter versus a not silent group of letters makes a really big difference. And what you can see throughout all of these boxes is, that, is I've bolded the uh, verb ending. So il, elle, on, vend. There is no verb ending, so nothing's bold there. Now let's see vendre used in an example in the present tense. Ce magasin vend des fleurs. Ce magasin vend des fleurs. This means that store sells flowers. It could also mean this store sells flowers. It's actually something that uh, all of my French pen pals often ask me. It's one of the first questions they ask if they have questions about English. What's the difference between this and that? Because in French, you just say ce magasin, this store. So I now want to show you, this is a great opportunity, to talk about how you form the negative in French. So we've been saying a lot of positive phrases, right? That meaning not positive in terms of mood, positive in terms of something that is being done. We're not telling you this is not being done. So that store sells flowers. What about if I want to say that store does not sell flowers? I would use the negation formula. Ne plus or plus the verb, meaning the verb, plus pas. So, ne, verb, pas. So, here's how we do it. Ce magasin, that store, this store, ne vend pas de fleurs. Now, it is important to note, I believe I have a note here at the bottom, and I'm going to explain it to you guys now. After the negation formula, ne, verb, pas, the partitive article, if that is the proper way to say it, yes, the partitive article, de, remains singular even though we're talking about a group of things. Perhaps in a future lesson, we will go over the partitive articles and the differences, but we're talking about that someone sells, or something rather, sells flowers. So usually we would say des fleurs. Des fleurs just means flowers by itself. But when we're using a negation after ne, verbe, pas, the partitive article de just stays as de in the singular. However, the, the word itself, the noun itself, the object, if you will, Fleur remains plural. So that store does not send flowers, does not sell flowers, rather. Now, it is common in spoken French to omit the ne in the negation formula. So it is very common in spoken French just to say, ce magasin vend pas de fleurs. Very common to say that. But generally speaking, in written French, you will use the whole formula. Now let's take a look at avoir and être. Avoir means to have, être means to be. These are two very important verbs in any language, and that is definitely still the case for French. So here's how we conjugate them in the present. They are both irregular verbs, meaning that they are going to follow their own unique pattern of conjugating, not very different from regular verbs, which means those verb endings we showed at the beginning of the lesson. You just take any verb, cut off an RE, IE, or I'm sorry, ER, IR, or RE, throw in one of those endings and you're good, right? That's what we just did with those other verbs. With avoir and être, because they are irregular, they don't necessarily follow that same exact pattern. That's what it means when we talk about a verb being irregular. So here's how we conjugate it in the present tense. J'ai, tu as, il, elle, on, a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. So I want to point something out here. As you notice, first, we have a contraction here. It's not je, et, we just say je, because there are two vowels next to each other. So we bring them together. That's a phenomenon we see all the time in Romance languages. We do it in Italian all the time. And here we did something called the liaison. What that means is we actually pronounce the S. But instead of the S making a sound like an S in English, it actually makes more of a Z sound, more of a Z or a Z sound. So here we pronounce this as nous avons, and similarly we say vous avez, and then I purposely separated ils ont, elles ont. Now, making this liaison is actually very helpful because that helps us to know we're talking about something plural and not something singular. 
Also, this is going to help us when we look at être, and I'll explain that when we get there. But first, let's look at two examples. We have one in the positive, or affirmative, you could also say, and then one in the negative. So, j'ai beaucoup d'amis. J'ai beaucoup d'amis means I have a lot of friends. If I want to say, contrarily, I don't have a lot of friends, I would say, je n'ai pas beaucoup d'amis. Now, as you can see, once again, we've got a lot of contractions. We have je and e coming together. We have de and ami also coming together because an e is next to a word that begins with another vowel, so we bring them together. Same thing happens here in the negation. We say je n'ai pas beaucoup d'amis. Now, the way uh, that we have this all set up is very common. The ne pas always goes around the verb. But what happened when our conjugation is usually a contraction, usually for the first person singular, it's je. Well, that little family gets broken up because je is no longer next to e. See how that works? If that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry. But I think for some of you guys, you might have gotten that. Now, we've got two notes here, two things I'd like to point out. After the word beaucoup, the part of article de that follows is always singular. So we always use de singular no matter what comes after, whether it's after the negation ne pas, and also when it's after beaucoup. So beaucoup de, ne pas de. And this is also a uh, method that I've always used when studying languages, just to learn how to say something affirmatively and negatively. I like to write the same exact phrase twice in both ways. So here, I have a lot of friends, I don't have a lot of friends. I think that's a really good way to learn uh, two different ways of saying something. Now, être. Être means to be, yet again, a highly irregular verb. We say, je suis, tu es, il est long, est, nous sommes, vous êtes, ils sont, elles sont. So that is different from ils ont, elles ont, which means he, they have, or they have uh, masculine and feminine respectively. Whereas this is ils sont. We make that s sound with the S. That's a very important distinction here. That's how we know we're saying they are versus they have. Now here is a somewhat formal expression you could say because we're using nous, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So here is how we use être in the present tense in context. Nous sommes contents d'être ici avec vous. Nous sommes contents d'être ici avec vous. That means we are happy to be here with you all. In this particular context, I'm using vous to mean you all, so the you plural, and not just simply you formal, but depending on context, it could just be the you formal. Now, what we have here is because we're dealing with être, very similar to essere in Italian, whenever we deal with to be, Être, we have to be mindful of gender and number agreement. So all we have to do to make a word plural in this particular situation is just to put an S at the end of content. So because we're saying we are happy, we say nous sommes contents. The pronunciation though is the same if it were content with an S or content without an S, it's the same thing. Now you can also see how we use être both conjugated and not conjugated in the same example. Nous sommes, we are, happy, to be. That's just how you would say content de, is content d'être, to be, to be happy. So we are happy to be here. Sorry, d'être ici, to be here. Anyway, I wanted to though take a moment to talk about the difference between nous and on. So generally, on, even though it is a third person singular subject pronoun, it is used to mean one or we, just depending on the context. So for example, I could say here, on est content d'être ici avec vous. We are happy to be here with all of you. So in this example, on takes the place of nous, and it has the same exact meaning. Note that on uses the standard third person singular conjugation of the verb, as we can see up here in our uh, conjugation table. Now, something you will also notice is that as we always do with être, with the verb to be, we have to agree gender and number, right? So we said on est content without an S. So the sound is the same, pronunciation is the same of that word. However, we don't have an S. So even though we're saying we, we're using a pronoun that is technically speaking singular. Hence, content is going to be singular as well. I have another example for you guys that help, may help to further exemplify how this works or demonstrate how this works rather. We could say, en France, on parle français. En France, on parle français. That could either mean, in France, we speak French. 
It could also mean in France, one speaks French, like one speaks French in general in France. So that's just to show you an example of how we can use en in another context. Now we're gonna close up today's lesson by looking at two very useful, two additional useful irregular verbs, vouloir and pouvoir. So in the present tense, just as we have in other Romance languages, when two verbs are next to each other in a sentence, the first one gets conjugated and the one that follows will remain in its infinitive, otherwise known as unconjugated form. So first we're gonna conjugate these verbs and then I'm gonna show you in both examples, two verbs next to each other. So vouloir means to want. Je veux, tu veux, il est l'on veut, nous voulons, vous voulez, il, elle, veut. Now, I do want to make one small pronunciation note. Yet again, I'm not a native, so I always do my best to try to pronounce these properly. However, an O-U in French makes an OU sound, like two O's next to each other, OU. Whereas the letter U in French makes a more U sound, just like that. So there's a differentiation between vouloir and something like tu. Okay, you see how that works? Yet again, I'm not a native, but I just wanted to point that out. Also, the OI makes a wa sound. Like ever, um, if you think of the word toi, it's like when in a different context, it can mean you, like et toi, like how are you doing today? Comment vas-tu? Moi, je vais bien, et toi? So how are you doing? I'm doing well, and you? So toi, T-O-I, has that wa sound, whereas tu is different. All right, anyway, just wanted to throw that in. Now let's look at an example of vouloir, conjugated in the present tense, in a phrase, but with two verbs in the sentence. Je veux aller au parc. Je veux aller au parc. Okay, I want to go to the park. I actually find that a little challenging to pronounce. Hope I said it okay. I did do a liaison there with vous allez. You don't have to do that. You could say je vous allez, je vous allez au parc. It's hard to say park when you get that R in the back of the throat. And A-U makes an O sound, like the letter O almost. O. I want to go to the park. So, je veux, je veux, the first uh, verb in the sentence, vouloir, is conjugated in the first person singular. But then we got a verb right after it, aller. Aller means to go, and it's not conjugated. It is in its infinitive form, its unconjugated form. It still ends in an E-R. Now, pouvoir. Pouvoir means to be able to or can, looks a whole lot like potere in Italian, that's how it works. Potere means to be able to and can, pouvoir means the same thing but in French. We say je peux, tu peux, il est l'on peut, nous pouvons, vous pouvez, ils, elles, peuvent. So if we want to use this in an example in context, we can say tu peux lire ce message s'il te plaît. But it's a question, so we use that rising intonation. Can you read that message, please? Or can you read this message, please? Just depending on context. Tu peux lire ce message, s'il te plaît? Now, even though we are being informal, doesn't mean we can't be polite. So we can still say please at the end, s'il te plaît, which means if it pleases you. That is literally what that means. So here, yet again, we've got two verbs next to each other. The second person singular conjugation of Pouvoir in the present tense, tu peux. And then we have lire, which means to read unconjugated. It's still got that R-E verb ending, that suffix. So there we have it. And that is basically it, guys. That is everything we had to cover today. What I will be doing is I will be making these notes available on my website. So if you would like to download your very own copy of these notes, just click the link down below in the description and it will take you to my website. Um, by purchasing these documents, you will be helping to support my channel. So I always greatly appreciate uh, anything that someone does to help support this channel. You are also supporting this channel by watching me. So thank you simply just by watching. I really do appreciate it. So guys, this has been our very first episode in my mini series of Wella Francais. We, I'm very excited to see how this goes. And so we'll see what happens after lesson after lesson. I'm looking to put all of these lessons in one playlist. So if you are watching this video at the time that it was uploaded, there probably aren't other videos yet in the Wella a Francais playlist, but I do have plans of adding many more. So if you're watching this later on, you can just feel free to go and binge watch 
all the videos in the playlist. Like always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and checking out this video. Also, like I mentioned earlier uh, today during this video, I am not a French teacher. I'm simply just a fellow lover of the French language, a fellow student of French. And my goal with these videos is just to share with you my notes and explain to you concepts that I have already learned in hopes that it will help make some sense to you guys. Because if you want to know my mission, what I'm always hoping to do when I teach is to be like that kid that's sitting next to you in the classroom. The teacher is explaining something at the front. Maybe you don't quite understand what they're saying because they're going into such great detail using such big words. doesn't make sense to you, right? But you turn to the kid next to you, you say, hey, what? What was the teacher just talking about? And your friend explains something in such an easy to understand way where you just get it like that. That is my hope. That is my mission. So I hope I succeeded in doing that today. Always remember to spread the love, guys, and I will catch you all next time. Ciao, ciao.